Hello everyone and welcome to number 37 of the Inventive Marketing Club. Um, this is the first of a bit of an experiment, which you've probably seen in um, our messages. What we've, well, I've, I've been running this club in this format for three years, I think. I think it's three years, maybe two. I can't, really can't remember. Um, yeah, I think it's three years. Basically doing a webinar like this every single month. Um, and that's that's been pretty good. I think it's worked quite well, but I've wanted to try something different. I've wanted to make the clubs a little bit more informal, but we'll come back to that because that's part of what we're talking about in this session, um, which is basically uh, having a review of your marketing and sales and the activities that have been going on. And more importantly, what you're going to be doing and how you're going to get there. So what goals you want to achieve that year and what strategies you want to put in place. Um, Hopefully in these club sessions, we're going to have Claire on every single one as my co-host, um, my reluctant co-host. Um, <laughs> and we're also joined by Nikki from Eclipse as, as a guest. So she's not only are we going to be sharing where we've come from over the past year and where we're going to, but also Nikki's going to be share, sharing uh, what Eclipse have been up to as well. So where should we start? Should we start by looking over the past year? If I go first and sort of give some facts and figures and what we've been up to um we'll take it from there right well i mean obviously covid has been a big issue certainly from 2000 to, to um uh, not 2000 2020 and 2021 there's been some big changes um and there's been some big changes in what we've been doing so it's it, in terms of how we're delivering. I mean, we were used to delivering a lot of stuff online anyway, so that was fine. In fact, the company's remote, you know. I now live in um, Wiltshire, Claire's all the way over in Herefordshire, and that's, it's, you know, we can work that way quite easily. So COVID was more interesting from our client's perspective. You know, we found there was some resistance with some clients to go online, to actually move online. Um, that obviously disappeared with, with COVID, everyone was forced to go online. All of our clients got laptops um, with cameras on top. So cameras and mics, so they could do everything online. Um, I had started, I've always loved doing workshops as well. I mean, workshops has been something quite important to the way we meet new people and gain new business. You know, we're not, I personally find social media hard. I'm not on it all the time. I'm not that conversational on social media workshops great love it because this that's my social media really that's where I bring people together um and I I felt that we were kind of we were doing workshops but they were tailing off a little bit because it was a lot of time and effort you had to you know maybe drive half an hour an hour there plus you've got the time there that's like half your day gone before you can do anything else so yeah it was a real commitment over the last two years um I've really found all workshops have gone online and it's been great. I think there's a certain amount of Zoom fatigue, fatigue or um, online workshop fatigue, but moving to online has meant I can deliver a lot more workshops. In fact, I was having a look um, just before we, we started and the, the number of workshops we delivered in 2019 was nine. Um, the number in 2020 was 17, so a massive jump. And just last year, it was 20. Uh, and that must be there's two factors i think i think we've been pushing to do more workshops so so more people have asked us to do workshops um but i've been more comfortable to do them and workshops for me has been one of the biggest apart from referrals one of the biggest ways of getting new business and meeting new people so it's really important actually that seeing if we can increase them or maximize those workshops so there's a significant increase there um I've got a few other numbers that you might be interested in. I just want to say hello to, I think Harry's joined us, come through as um, her son, I think, but it's uh, Harry's joined us. Hi, Harry. Um, we're trying this new format out in Zoom, so um, feel free to, to chat in Zoom and we'll perhaps do a bit of Q&A later. So if you want to join in, you can do that. Um, so I was having a look and on Google Analytics, we had 4,700 users, which actually is probably the smallest out of all of our clients. You know, a lot of our clients have many more users than that over, over a year, but the users did go up by 13%, not massive, but it did increase. And, you know, and, and to be honest, we have not been focused on driving traffic. You know, Claire's been very good at pushing out social media messages. Um, but to be honest, I've, 
I've been very busy over the last year. My main aim has not been on SEO or driving traffic um, to the website. Oddly, you would think that would be our main, main source of income, but actually workshops work really well. I think, and we'll talk about this later, I think where we're missing a trick is the um, linking between offline or, or the workshop sort of outside capturing people who are interested in, in our services and bringing them through on the workshop. But anyway, so we had users that went up by 13%. The bounce rate went down by 10%. Again, there was no, there was no focused effort to do that. So that just happened. I don't know if that was, um, uh, you know, that just could have been fake that it happened that way. But that's great. You know, users went up, bounce rate went down. Happy days. Um, we don't have any easy way of uh, tangibly recording conversions that mean anything on our website. Because at the moment, we don't have anything that people can really do or buy. The only thing on our website that could be considered a conversion point is um, we've got like a Calendly embed on there. So people who are interested in talking to us can book on that. But that's not tied in with Google Analytics. Again, we'll be talking about a new website we'll be launching later. That will actually have a lot more metrics in terms of people joining the club, people buying things online and so on. So actually next year, we should be able to start measuring conversion rate and, um, and actual goals and purchases on our website. Um, looking at Google Search Console, which is what we use to see how many people are coming into uh, finding us online and what keywords they find us with. And it's actually really important for, Google, for search optimization. So I use it all the time with clients. Um, we've, we took, kind of track keywords to do with marketing and web development. Or website design so just a few here um web marketing and web sorry marketing training in the cotswolds has been it stayed around the same at about position four and i haven't done anything on that i literally have not optimized that at all that's just where it's sat so that to me is that actually if i did some work we might actually move up to a much higher position on that mm -hmm. um Marketing club itself as just a keyword looking for people looking for marketing clubs that's gone down to position 12. Um, well, that's moved down to position 12. Again, we haven't, we haven't done any SEO work on, on the website over the last year, if not the previous year as well. So um, it's moved down. I would arguably say that it's actually probably not a good keyword to track marketing club because the way we've been looking at it is that a lot of people aren't searching for a marketing club. They're searching for solutions to particular issues of which the marketing club could solve that. But most people are not looking for a marketing club. And if they are, they're probably competitive. Um, so actually, uh, that's not a keyword I need to, I should really care about anymore. In terms of web design, um, web design, Siren Sister and Cotswolds have actually improved a little bit, but we're still on page five. So again, we haven't really optimized those. Um, but they have improved. So obviously some of the work we're doing online is good. Um, usually getting more backlinks. We have got more backlinks and guest blog articles. So that's improved things, but really without a focused effort, which I know it's like, it's like a plumber sink in, in for our website, really too much, too focused on other people's websites. Um, however, because we've moved now, I've got an opportunity to sort of get more um, work in the Bristol area, South Gloucestershire, Wiltshire and Chippenham. Web design, Wiltshire and Chippenham, we are not shown or we're you know, past the first 100, 100 results. So we've got work to do there. So that's just a sort of roundup. In terms of Google Search Console, we've definitely got work to do to, to improve things. Um, so let's look at the sales side of the business. So I already mentioned that the workshop workshops we've delivered, which I consider key um, lead generators, in 2019, it was nine, 2020, it was 17, 2021, it increased to 20, that's good. In terms of quotes we've um, put out to people, you know, actual real quotes that, that have gone out, not just um, email um, estimates. In 2020, we had an average value of uh, 19,700 for the quotes with a 22% conversion rate. In 2021, so last year, the average value went up to 2,800, so it increased. Conversion rate actually did go down slightly, but the average value went up. Um, we had fewer quotes, but people were spending more, significantly more. So not just um, um, inflation, 
but there was I think more to sell we have the club we we we've started selling hosting a lot more actively and we've always done hosting but we're actively selling it more um, and there's a few other things I'll mention as well so in terms of quotes we've had fewer quotes but they are much bigger spent so I, maybe there's a certain amount of focus for me as well, trying to pick pick my battles, the ones that I feel I can win. Because last year we did um, and have period, periodically pitched for, um, I don't know what you call them, sort of um, tenders and things like that. We don't do well at tenders. In fact, I don't think I've ever won a tender at all. Um, and so actually not actively seeking tenders out and going for a business where you have a relationship with that person because you've met them at a workshop or networking, they have been much more fruitful. So I think that focus pays out. Um, in terms of actual then sales coming through, in 2020, we had an average value of 1,525 per client because obviously we've got many more clients than quotes that go out. The average value, 1,500 pounds approximately. Um, last year, 2,000 pounds. It's gone up massively. And I think that's because we have been, there are more products that we can sell to people, more hosting, more uh, the club, more value that we can bring. Um, and people have wanted it. We have been lucky as well. The government has been giving out some, some grants as well to new businesses. So we've been read, you know, I think us having delivered workshops for the growth hub and um, being in the right place with them giving out the grants has been helpful to us as well. So hopefully that will continue next year. So I'm, I'm quite pleased that we've been doing, you know, we've been putting ourselves out there more. I've been going out there more. Um, and I've seen that um, increase in our profitability, uh, definitely. So from our, from our point of view, that's been great. Um, and just another number here, our club members now stand at 95. So um, that's all, all club members. Um, most of those club members also have some other service from us as well. So that's really good. I'm pleased because mm -hmm. considering we started it two or three years ago, I wish I could remember, it must be three yeah, years ago. Yeah, I think it was about two, three years ago. I think it was three years ago. So considering that, I've, I, and I've, I've been kind of gentle with it. I haven't been aggressive in marketing club. You know, I talk about it to club members, but we haven't been aggressive in going out and saying, hey, we've got this thing that might be quite cool. Um, I feel more confident now we've got a backlog. I've had some significant practice. Um, I think people enjoy it. Um, and we've got, you know, we've got people as part of the community. So just a couple of other things to round off. Um, last year, I wanted, these are goals really. Yeah. <laughs> last year, we wanted to launch the new rather inventive website. We didn't, we didn't do that. Almost, we, so close. It, we was, close. it was, it was so <laughs> close, wasn't it? And not for, not, you know, you were very good, Claire, in terms of, Claire, like I'm coach to many clients, Claire is my coach. She's my sort of support that we can go to. Um, and Claire was very good at sort of pushing, 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 but we had so much work we needed to focus on that. And, you know, there were a couple of snagging points and yeah, I want it to be perfect. I want it to be right. So... It's nearly there, though. Um, we wanted to increase club members. Um, I didn't have a, a, a specific goal for that, but we did. We did increase club members, but, you know, it, it, it happened quite well. Um, I wanted to host more websites. You know, something that we've got quite down quite well and we can do well and support. I think one of the things we can do quite well in is actually give people support with their website, not just host it. There are so many companies that can host it and they can do it for cheaper than us but we can provide support. And there's many companies that can't, can't bring those two together quite well. So I wanted to capitalize on that. So I have been doing that. And that's why we saw this increase. Um, I also wanted to get more websites on our sort of smaller WordPress network. I don't know if anyone, any, any of you know, but WordPress has a way of hosting multiple websites in one. And so I wanted to have a, like a, a lower cost um, mechanism for people to, come on and host with us rather than going with Wix or Squarespace, because while it might cost them just a little bit more than those platforms, only a little bit in terms of pounds, they'll get so much more out of it. And then when they're ready to grow, they're already on WordPress and they can just go. And actually we did in 2021, we got eight sites on that platform. So I was quite happy with that. And again, that's without aggressively marketing. We weren't going out marketing it. It's just a mindset, I think. I had a focus to do it and I changed my mindset. So when I spoke to people, I had something to offer them. 
I'm going to leave it there for the moment. I want to come on to our goals for this year, but maybe Nikki, um, as you're offering to sort of open up a little bit, would you share, you don't have to share numbers or anything like I have. I just thought it'd be interesting for people to, to hear, but Nikki, would you perhaps share what you've been doing with Eclipse over the last year? Yeah, no problem. Um, well, like you say, Ben, it's been a, a really tough um, 18 months, two years, really, um, in the respect of any plans that you had for January, February, March, 2020 kind of quickly went out of the window and any marketing plans that we had already um, had a look for for the following few months because as we do we do do a marketing plan for 12 months but we kind of concentrate for the three months in front of us and the three months behind us and just see what's going on just so it's a little bit more concentrated so any plans that we had around that time were kind of quashed uh, in in some kind of way well, yeah exactly went right out of the window um Although I say went right out the window, we've been really, really lucky um, in as much as we've kept working and we've kept kind of on a, on a, a, a you know, kind of like on a nice level of, um, of work. We did have three weeks furlough, but I think that was only just to take time out and just reevaluate what was happening and just, uh, you know, balance everything out of it. Um, but we were very, very quickly back into it because when some of us were on furlough, there was only a couple that were working and they were really working hard and, and still out there because obviously we pass as key workers. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, we do CCTV, access control, intruder alarms. So we kind of were able to get into um, the places where we can't normally get into in term time. So that's universities, colleges, uh, schools, manufacturing, you know, all that kind of thing. We could, we could get into quite easily through that period. Um, from the planning point of view, it all went out of the window in as much as we were planning to go to exhibitions. Um, I've got you know, four exhibitions that we were going to go to in 2020. Um, we were launching a new product, which was like, oh, my goodness, we've launched this new product. And now it's kind of like, ah, we can't get it out to market in the exhibitions that we wanted to. So we had to quickly switch to digital, which is what we did. Um, we quickly reevaluated with Ben because we've worked with Ben quite a lot. So we quickly reevaluated re the plan and the marketing plan and, and went digital quite quickly um, because there were three exhibitions that we just had to obviously that we, they, they cancelled, um, which slowed down the product bringing to market, which is CCTV yeah. Logbook. Um, and um, you know, I won't go into much of that, but people can go and see it on, online, CCTV Logbook.com. Um, and you know that slowed down that product coming to market which was an impact for us but you know it, it is what it is and this year we're picking back up on the exhibitions and going for it and, and that it will be cctv logbook year this year um so from the digital marketing point of view yeah it was um you know a complete switch and karen's never been so busy she's our digital marketing um geek as she calls herself um, but yeah, we've never been so busy on that side of things and um, trying to meet creative on the campaign monitor, using the email marketing and that kind of thing. And trying to really focus really was to try and get some um, response and some kind of engagement from, from that, which is hard. Mm. Um, you know, email marketing historically is, is really, really hard because it's a numbers game and we know that. But the main thing that we were doing and our focus throughout the whole period was just to show people that we are here, we are ticking along, we will still give you information. Um, but the information that we were giving was probably a little bit, um, it, was, it was friendlier because we were trying to say, look, you know, you can't, you can't see the whole team as you normally would, but we're still here, this is what we're doing, this is what we're planning on doing. Um, we can still help you. We can still abide by all the rules. So there was a lot of COVID um, guidelines going out there just to show people what we were doing and what have you. And really just to build that trust element and, and just to make sure that everybody knew that we were still around. So that's what we, we've done marketing-wise over the last 18, 18 months. Um, it's coming up to two years, isn't it? Which is quite sad. Um, anybody, you know, we, my mother half and I went for a walk just as we went into the pandemic and we found a new field and as we were walking through this field we were like it's only 12 weeks it's only 12 weeks we can do this it's fine and then we walked through the field like six months later and we were like oh my goodness when we were walking through it at the beginning who would have known that we were there six months later still talking about it and it's still around so really the, you know the time span and what have you is quite crazy 
but um, you know we are uh, Eclipse it, uh, started in the pandemic. It's now Eclipse and Security Group. We we bought a new company June last year. Was it last year or the year before? The year before, wasn't it? My goodness, yeah. It was Time disappears, before. isn't it, at the moment? So we bought, yeah, we bought a new company which now has um, increased our offering, and we can now offer intruder alarms. So Security Group is based in Bristol. Um, a little bit nestled in by Ben and Eclipse is in Worcestershire, um, in, in Bromsgrove in Worcestershire. So with the two, so from a business point of view, the pandemic hasn't been that bad. Buying a new business, bringing that on board and still working, still getting more business, still um, still have here at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, well, that's that, the key thing, isn't it? Whether you, yeah. you know, the fact you've stayed, you, you are where you are and you're busier is great. Yeah. Yeah, um, still here and still being able to put out quotes. I mean, the quotes are going out and, and, and it's massive. There's, we've got quite a lot of things going on at the moment. And, and you know, we, we've got, um, we're working with high-end individuals. We're working with some really, ex, you know, really um, exciting people and, and challenges for us. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's really good. Um, so, you know, we're, we're actually bigger in the team now. Um, we're bigger by three so um so we can't complain really um but this year i can see things slowly going back to normal in as much as like i said the exhibitions however the zoom calls and the meetings and the time that you can save on those zoom calls from traveling and, and what have you is I, I don't think i don't think we can go back from that i think i that hope is, not that yeah. is something that really is um it's working because like you said ben you're down in, in wiltshire claire's over in herefordshire i'm in worcestershire then obviously we've got harry here that you know we don't know uh, but it, we are forest. talking yeah. forest there we go nice um so we are talking we're communicating we're networking and, and everything else but you can do that really relatively easy and i do webinars and i do training sessions and you know, I can talk to somebody in Ireland or where, wherever, you know, and you can still do that um, from office or wherever and you don't have to do the transfer. It's great, thing. isn't it? Have yeah. you, um, Nikki, you've been on some online networking sessions, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. What, how have you found those compared to um, physical? Um, I think they're actually a lot better because... Um, when you when you physically networking, I mean, I've done a lot of physical networking, then that's yeah. great. It's not a problem. Um, yeah, and you you do like proper networking, like B and I stuff, hardcore. Don't you? hardcore. <laughs> yeah, and and I find you know the B and I is fine, and, and I've done B and I online, um, and that's great. Um, but I do think that it's more focused online. So when you go into a B and I meeting or you go into any networking meeting, you don't necessarily know. Who you want to speak to because you don't know who's in the room and i know that's a, that's an idea you know that's part of networking you have to go around the room work the room to find it out however if you're on a zoom call you've got like we've got now i can see that claire's from rather inventive i can see ben's rather inventive i can see you know whoever on the screen i can see who people what people are doing mm. and i can kind of think oh i think i might want to see, speak to that person that person, they haven't got the halo when you walk into a, a, a networking room naturally, you know, into, you, you haven't got that. So you, you do have to either find out who the organiser is to find out who's in the room. And then you have to find out who that person is. So if, for instance, if I want to speak to somebody from Worcester County Council, they haven't got a halo saying I'm from Worcester County Council. You can't go, they not necessarily have got a name badge on all the time. Granted, if you're in BNI, you have. Um, but I find it's easier and more targeted when you're on zoom yeah. and it's not rude because you put in in you can you know you can message them and just say actually i've been wanting to speak to you for quite a while can we make a you know and and it's fine you can make that contact with somebody and it's it feels less rude and less invasive because yeah. you don't have to go in front of somebody and say oh excuse me can i just interrupt um you, you you know you can make that contact and you can share your contact in a less pushy, less invasive way on Zoom. So I'm all for marketing, you know, network marketing on on um, on Zoom or Teams or whatever because I found it much easier. 
and you know you can just put in in the comments what you do and then yeah. if somebody wants to contact with you or, or connect with you then they can um, that's interesting because I, I um I, I i like it for those reasons as well um i mean i love meeting people in person but i i just don't have the time nor do i want to leave very early in the morning to go and drive somewhere you know and mm -hmm. Um, and really, for me, I don't just want to keep networking in the local area. I want it quite wide. And so online is great for that. Um, what I have noticed a few people do um, on networking is having like some kind of easy offer that they can share. So rather than saying, hi, I'm Ben and I can do all this stuff is, is actually saying if, having an offer that they can put. So I've seen someone, what's he doing? He's like a brand expert and he had an offer to have a brand review. So he didn't really say much else, but it's very targeted. I help people with branding. Come go to my website, have a, you know, have a brand quiz or something. And, and that basically then leads, leads you through a series of questions that ultimately ends up with a conversation with him. It's a nice little funnel. And I thought that, I think it's easier to do that online because you can share a link which people can then easily click on. They're already on the computer, most of them, some people are on mobile, but most, mostly on the computer, they can click on it and, and start doing it almost there and then. And I thought that's 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 well, that's a good idea. I thought, <laughs> Some, and something we we probably will will be looking to do this year. But I I think I think that's a lot easier to do online. You know, actually, um, not only jumping over and speaking to someone you want to speak to, and it's less threatening for some people as well. Mm. I think a lot of people get um, quite scared by networking, so it's actually quite nice. I think it's it's easier to be in the comfort of your own home to some degree yeah i mean it can be it can be quite harrowing can't it when you're walking into a group of, of people you, you have never ever met before um and really i mean let's face it realistically you, you are make you do want to make contacts don't you because you don't go to networking just for coffee you, you are going i do for... if it's good coffee I, you know, or bacon i'm happy yeah, with that. or the pastry in fact, I just what? mentioned this. I, I know um, Ang Harrod, who's not on this, but she she runs Hot Tubs Rock. She knows Harry, who's online now. And I think they're having a couple of networking sessions. They're doing um, uh, Ang Harrod's local business rock, and they're having them at um, Tudor Farmhouse in the Forest of Dean, uh, Harry, Harry, mm -hmm. Harry's company. Um, and I'm, it's just a bit too far for me to go in the morning, but otherwise I'll be there, Harry, definitely, because the breakfast at your place looks lovely. <laughs> that sounds nice. There are some nice places for breakfast, but it, um, yeah, it is, it is more than, you know, you have, you have got a goal in your head. You should yeah. have a goal in your head when you're going to these places, because you are going for brand awareness. You are going to make the connection um, and not necessarily do business because that, that is unrealistic, but you are going to widen your connections and, yeah. and make, make everybody aware of, you know your brand and on what you do and what have you and vice versa because you know you don't know what other companies are out there that can um help you personally or in your business or however you don't know so you are make you are trying to make um contacts and the amount of times that i've been to a networking do um meeting and come away i thought mm, really get to speak to that person that i wanted to speak to because you know if nine times out of ten i pick the ones that all everybody wants to speak to and it's like, oh, and they're in a little huddle. And you think, yeah. how am I going to get to that huddle? How am I going to get in there? What, what do I do? Um, but on Zoom, it's easy. And do you think yeah. it's more sincere on, on sort of like a video chat? Because if you're not interested, it's cut off straight away. And rather than this sort of polite conversation and the dance around the topics and people interrupting you, um, do you think it's sort of you get more results? I do, yeah, I think online. it's more sincere and I think it's less stress because if you are person to person and they don't want to speak to you, that can be awkward, can't it? I mean, you yeah. can tell because they're just like looking everywhere else apart from <laughs> looking at you or having the conversation with you and, and you know from the second that you've said, hi, I'm Nikki, <laughs> just want to speak to you about, or how are you? How do you find this? And they're like, oh gosh, no thanks. Yeah. He's looking over there and you then then it kind of it's hard but on you know you know that your zoom doesn't happen like that no because people you know people wouldn't engage with you if they didn't want to engage with you so it, it doesn't happen like that so it's, more more online networking for you this year yeah yeah um more of that and and actually you know bni we're not members anymore but i'm i'm a super sub apparently <laughs> so um so i go and meet and uh, visit and sub 
for other people that I know. And um, and when I sub, then I mean that's that's good because then obviously people can see synergy there and they say, Well, oh, speak to you about this, and you know, I was talking to somebody the other day who was in stationary ordinary, but you know, you, you think that that wouldn't be a synergy for us, but actually where they go. And the companies that they're actually they're probably meet, yeah meeting lots of other companies. They yeah, are great. meeting the, the same companies. So yeah. So um, what other campaigns have worked particularly well last year? Um, what other strategies? Oh gosh, right. So um, we like their newsletter. The newsletter goes out every month, um, and that's well received. Um, the engagement on there, you can see obviously with clicks and what have you. So you can see that that's well received. So basically, we, we're still getting blogs out there. Um, and the blogs, um, they obviously have to go across the whole of the, is the business now. So we have to Diverse, share those. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we have to share those out. And, and there's so many parts of the business that we're talking about. And we're trying to balance all the wheels and what have you. Um, so yeah, that that was um, you know the blogs going out, the newsletter going out, um, working really really closely with all the lads and, and all the engineers and what have you, to try and get out um, engaging material that we we know will work and we know will um, people will like. So we know that you know the increase on the videos. So we do the videos, we do the professional ones with Claire, and then we also do ad hoc videos. So if we've had a big in you know a really big order come in like we did um, the once and we got cables spanning the whole wall and I just thought my god that's quite a lot of cabling yeah so I just took a quick um, photo of it and and it ended up being one of the highest performing videos um you know use a bit of snapchat or a bit of boomerang and what have you people love a bit of boomerang don't they I I think some of your smaller videos have done very well Mm. Um, because they're yeah. interesting they're short i mean which a lot of people like so it's easy to engage with them um but they're also interesting and different but trying to make it all human as well i mean we, yeah. we, we do cctv so sometimes we've got some really cracking footage on there like um you know just little bits and pieces like a spider making its web that went crazy we just made it you know time lapse of that and that went absolutely crazy and a blue tit just hanging onto one of the cameras and just looking down <laughs> over the camera. So you've just got a blue tit looking at you from, you know, it's just things like that, that, you know, we're trying to get out there just to say, we are doing this, but this, look, look at this result. This is quite, yeah. it's quite funny. It's quite, um, you know, the, the bin. I mean, everybody loved the bin. The bin goes from, you know, the, by the wall in the office outside and then one of our engineers turn up in the middle of and on the monday morning and like why is it been in the middle of the car park why isn't it by our wall so of course because we've got cctv we look back on it and then the wind took the bin but it looked very eerie so we kind of put a bit of spooky music on it and said is it the wind or is it paranormal activity you decide so it's that kind of stuff that we know works. And, and when we look back on it and we have a, a little bit of, you know, analysis and what have you, we know that, that kind of stuff works. But also, you know, this, the sensible stuff that we've put out and, and the, um, the information that we're trying to get out there just to help and inform people, actually, mm. on a consultative point of view, rather than, you know, we do this, we do that, we do the other and hard sell. We're just trying to get out there in a... Um, but just in, in a nice way, just saying, look, you know, we can help with this. This is how we've helped this person. This is how we've helped that person. So, um, so that that kind of um, spin this year. Although we have put videos out before, but we'll be putting more videos out. I hope so. I was going to ask, are you going to be doing more? Because they do take longer, but you're pretty good at doing it now. You can edit them. You can do a lot of screencasts, and you know, you do most most little bits yourself. And as you say, bring in Claire if you need a bigger camera and someone else to operate, and just give a bit of professionalism to it but actually the ones you produce are pretty good uh, and get some good engagement um doing more of them is is i'm glad to hear you say that because we will be doing more of them yeah definitely um i mean we've got the other we've got another string to our bow we bought on the um fog generators the fog uh, density um and, and they're like steam engines when you do that when you do the uh, <coughs> videos on those that's like a steam engine so i was showing somebody the other day and they're like oh my god I have a steam engine in my warehouse. But I mean, you know, so there's all sorts of different things that we can we can bring to the table. Um, and obviously footage and what have you and various different things. 
but yeah it's just seeing what people like and and we now know that it's the kind of quirky stuff that they like yeah yeah what i found is that people like seeing people mm. um over uh, you know they, they like you know, they like animals obviously but that's not doesn't really apply to you um or beautiful landscapes but um they like seeing people and they like interesting things different mm. things yeah, and, and humour. And, I think humour goes a long way as well. Yeah, yeah we well, try and get well, some we, bits and pieces out there that are funny. And, and then we share bits, we share stuff like, you know, any new marketing material that we've got. You know, that's not to say, oh, look at us. I mean, the guys have just had beanies because they've been absolutely bugging me for a couple of weeks. They're like, we're heads freezing. <sighs> like, well, you can wear hats. And then I was like, oh, actually, yeah. we'll get our own. So we've got some, um, we've got some beanies. Get them with the little torches on as well. Little... We That's... haven't got the torches one, no, because they're not very often out there. But I've had a, a selfie from one of them this morning that will go on to social in a bit. So he's uh, he's just um, he's out in, um, where are they? I think they're, they're down by you, actually, Ben. They're not far away from you. So he's out in a field and, and it was frosty this morning. And he's, very um, cold this morning. Yeah. Took a photo this morning saying, thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> um, Shall we move on and sort of talk about the future for this year, what we're going to do? Um, shall I start first again and then we'll go to see if you've got any other plans, Nikki? Um, and Claire, you can join on this because you're very much part of this, this phase of it. Um, now, it, goals. I mean, I, everyone should have goals. And I, I guess I have them. I don't always write them down. Um, I it's do important much to commit to pay for it. Is. And, I, and actually, we do. Claire and I will... Uh, we will try and talk once a month or maybe every two months. I think the end of last year, we were pretty bad. In fact, I met Claire at the beginning of this year, met up with a few clients in Hereford um, and had a good session with Claire. And I hadn't seen you, Claire, I think in person for what, two years since, two years. since COVID? We've just been working online. So it's weird. It's like, ah, you actually do exist. Um, but we, you know, we normally do try and talk together. Um, and Claire is very good at writing up the notes and sort of holding me accountable for various things. So. I guess we do have that. But one of the things I want to do this year soon is to launch the new website finally, because it's been waiting a whole year. We are so close. Um, and it, the, the most important thing about it is it, it's not it's not just the marketing messages is hopefully tighter and more focused and visually it's slightly different. It's that it's got our club. So one of the things I've been wanting to do for ages is actually have a, um, a not only a base for all the club material on our website, but also allow people to buy club membership from the website. Because at the moment, they buy it either as part of um, some other subscription from us, or they can, you know, there are various ways they can buy it using GoCardless or uh, what was the other method? Or just, I can just send them an invoice. But it's just, to me, that's not very professional. It doesn't work. I want it streamlined. I want people, people to be able to come into the website and then basically be excited enough to join the club and so it might might be worth shall i just show share the website just yeah, showcase the, st the staging site maybe you can give me some feedback on where we are at the moment um right can everyone see that yeah. so essentially it looks very similar i mean it's a very similar looking website i don't see the the need to really change things that dramatically from that point of view but one of the key things we want to do is focus more on the club you know, we do quite, one of the, one of the reasons we do quite well is we have a lot of recurring subscription revenue. And I think that allows us, because clients can commit to us, we can commit to them. So coaching has always been very good for that. As I mentioned last year, we're also increasing, we got more people onto hosting as well, so we could apply for the support. But I think most of the people on the website are, I want them to be I want people to be led to the website because they're interested in um, marketing help and support. So either they'll want coaching or mostly they'll probably want the club because that's a really easy way in to get help from us without it costing a lot of money. Obviously, hopefully we're good value, but still there's a price to pay if you want independent uh, attention. So one of the things we want to do is actually focus the, the main side around the club. So um, you can see on the home, on the, um, menu here that's one of the first items kind of going in order of expectation marketing club coaching web design so let's have a quick walk, walk through here so we've got uh, an, an updated montage featuring a few more different things that have gone on there are still lots of in-person events now they were from 2019 yeah. so i haven't been able to update those that the the actual zoom ones don't look quite as engaging and exciting <laughs> sadly um 
I'm also just one of the things we did, we didn't do so well. And again, it's like the plumber sink. I focus on clients and helping them sort of bubble up what's what key services they they want to have. But we didn't really sort of showcase the main things that we sell. So I'm trying to do that here. We've got our marketing training. We've got marketing coaching. So one to one support, really, and web development. And actually saying these are the things we do. It wasn't so clear on the previous site. And then actually leading people into them. So and uh, you developed your own uh, club uh, branding, didn't you? Last yes. So I worked with um, a friend of mine and designer, John Hurley. So he came up with the um, club branding, which eventually I will get a T-shirt with the club on it um, that people can buy it maybe eventually. But I will have it, and I can wear that out. So if I'm doing if I'm doing networking on Zoom it's going to be present on here. If I go out um, to, because I like going to conferences, so if I go to conferences, it's going to be on there. And so uh, as well as the, the hosting and the coaching we do, I'll be known for the club. That will be one area. Claire, you can have one too. Yes. Um, so yeah, John Hurley, he, uh, he's a, a designer, a graphic designer. And so he came up with a logo and a set of colours that were brighter and bolder because our website was kind of, the blue was the key colour that shone out. Everything else was a bit muted. So we're trying to be a bit more exciting in color. Now, um, one of the things he said to me when we we're designing the site is actually keep a lot of it quite muted, but when they get to the club, really pop the color out. So we're experimenting with that. Um, so anyway, we've got these key sections that go off some client videos, nice eclipse one there. Um, client logos, we never put client logos on our website. I don't know why. Um, don't know why we didn't do that, but we've never done that. And more feedback, so really focusing on where we are. Let's go into the club. So this is starting to be really punchy now. And we're starting to use the purple, which is the main club color. Um, and keeping the membership simple. Before it was like, oh, you can do this, or you can do this, or you can do this. No, it's just one thing. This is the membership and you can get a 30 day free trial. It's one of the things we didn't do before. It was just join or not. <laughs> um, now it's like, now we have the mechanism to give a 30 day free trial without me having to turn people on and off and do all that faffing around. We can do it. So it's all a bit more exciting on here. They've got a little video for me explaining the benefits. And hopefully this is the above the fold section where people can, if they're bouncing to and from our site, not sure, not sure, but once they're ready, we've got everything here for them to see. Um, there's even one of, and I, I really like this. This is um, the fifth, webinar I did all on five-star review. So actually giving away that full length one for free. So they can just go and watch it on the webpage and it's gonna hopefully give them some value before they even join. Um, talking about benefits, they can subscribe, they can list, look at other fantastic clients here. Oh, look, it's Nikki. Um, and also they will be able to see what's upcoming. Now we haven't changed this yet, but this is gonna show the upcoming webinar and get them a bit excited about it. Um, anyway, I won't go into the detail of that, but we're quite excited about that because it works better. It allows people to buy online so they can actually go and subscribe to it from here, which is nice. The website will be powering all of that. And then once they're in, they get a club page. So you can always go in and see whatever the latest webinar was, what the last one would be. So for instance, after, after we have this one, Claire would do her magic, put it online, and you'd be able to go here and see the recording and see any notes for it. You always know where it is. Um, and then also surfacing, we've got so much information, which is on Basecamp at the moment under the club section, which people, it's just not surfaced easily for people to see. So we've got our, what I think are quite good, these, um, uh, they're blog articles essentially, but they're basically running people through um, many different steps that you need to achieve to um, improve your marketing, all the way from I haven't done any marketing um, through to setting up social accounts, doing your SEO, starting to plan, knowing your customers and so on and moving up these levels. So we'll start featuring those. And then people can go and explore content so, so they can basically dive in and see everything we've talked about, email marketing from our own articles, links to other people's and the club sessions, uh, a better link to the, um, the actual podcast, which is an audio version and then um, a recent articles feed. Now, I have just imported all of the old content. So um, I need to, this is the bit where I need to tidy it up, but we're getting there. Um, yeah, so I think, I think hopefully what this will do is not only allow us to 
focus on the club a bit more and talk about the club, but allow people to buy it there and then without it being difficult. I mean, the rest of it's pretty much the same. The coaching offer hopefully, hopefully has been tightened up a little bit. Um, web development, certainly, we're, we're tightening that up that a bit more. We're showcasing all of the websites, or well, this is only a small selection of the websites we've done. So the, getting this live is really important because it's not just a new design. It's actually a new function that we can't easily move forward with where I want to go with the club until this is live. So it's really key. Um, so anything else you want to showcase on there, Claire? Um, we were going to talk about um, how we were going to filter people through on the new website. Yes. So, I'll, OK, I'll leave this live for the minute. So what I want to do is double the number of club members. Currently, we've got 95. I want to make that 200. And um, I want a lot of club members are already people we know. I want 75 people to be people we have not met um, or they're not a client through something else. They've come in, maybe come to a workshop, maybe know us on social media and then they join and they don't have any other service. That's what I want because then that shows it's really working. Not only clients love it, but other people. Um, so that's some, and, and I think also I want to help clients um, use the content because speaking to people as I do regularly, whether it's hosting or coaching, um, I will point out club sessions that will be useful as follow-ups for people to watch and they do watch them. But I think a lot of people forget how much is actually there. Um, so we need to find a better way of showcasing that content, not only what's new, but also past content that relates back to that. I think there's, I'm not sure the best way of doing that, whether it's a newsletter um, or, or more on social media, I don't know, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, but yes, one of the things we wanted to do is actually have a better sales funnel. Because at the moment, well, I, I, I spoke about that rather interesting idea where someone was uh, on a Zoom workshop and then rather than pitching what they offer, pitching something that will help people. So pitching a, a, like a branding exercise or a quiz. That's what, that's what I've been wanting to do for, for some time. So what we'll be looking at doing is creating a, um, having one way that people can sort of access a free sample, if you will. At the moment, if we look at our current website, at the moment we've got this bit down the bottom here, which is using Calendly. Um, and what people can do is they can book a free session at a certain time, send in their details, what they want to do, and then they get half an hour with me to talk through that. I think, that, I think that's really useful. What I'm not capitalising on is what happens next. So what I want to do is my offer is that people get this, which is good, and that's why I do in workshops anyway, <clears throat> but I bring them to a website where they put in a few details first. They tell me what their challenges are. Maybe they pick them on some radio buttons or select boxes. They, they, they invest a little bit of time going through. That's gonna help them realize where they are in their marketing journey. And then at the end, of it, it's gonna give them some options. So it's gonna say, actually, coaching would re be really beneficial, or maybe a, a website refresh with some uh, SEO focus, or, or maybe joining the club. And so once we get to narrow down those options, we can actually refine the message that we're sending them from that point. Um, so that's the first stage. The next stage would be for them to join. Uh, so, so if it's coaching they want, then actually this is the best thing for them. If it's SEO, it's like this, but a variation focused on a website review. If it's the club, it could be a sequence of emails that sort of give them, uh, take them through some of the foundations of marketing to get them to join. So we haven't quite uh, worked out that bit yet. But the actual idea of developing this funnel, I think will not only make it quite fun for people, it's something, it's something that's going to be useful to them to begin with, but it's also going to be easier for me. I like rules. I think Claire knows this sometimes, although I do change rules a lot, but I like rules. <laughs> and once I have a rule, I, it's easier for me to stick to it. Because I, I, uh, I don't know about you, uh, Nikki, but I, I find it difficult to... Uh, go all in on something until I know what that thing is so mm. a rule helps me know what that thing is and then Definitely. I'm comfortable to share it with people well, so if well, I have this... something the other day that we were, we were that, yeah definitely you need to know all about something before you actually go into it yeah and um, you know maybe I shouldn't do that but that's the way I am so actually having this you know 
I'm using the mercenary term, a sales funnel, but that's effectively what it is. It's a way of helping direct people to the right place, give them some value, but also uh, get them to invest a bit of time. So they're more, so basically they can rule themselves in or out because I want people to go, yeah, this is really interesting to me and then go down that rabbit hole mm. or not. If it's not, that is great. They can move on with their day. But if, if there's um, that, that, that structure, you can evaluate the process and see where people are maybe dropping out or if your message isn't yes. clear enough. Mm. Um, so you can start to sort of drill down into where you are and where the customer is and see if there's if why it's not marrying up or what is working. That's right. It, it, it gives us a focal point. As well, though, won't it? Because already if somebody does do that process that you're you're going to put on there, they've already self-qualified, really. You don't need to do any yes. more. And they're committing, um, not committing a wholly, but they are very much down the line of committing to working with you because they've done all of that before I don't mean there's lots to do but I just no. mean that by answering those questions they're either they're committing to say actually I do need your help and this is in, in the area that I do need because obviously you can see I do six other or seven other offers but you've actually said you want help on that so you're actually already when you get to speak to them it's already an easier conversation to it is they yeah. know what to expect mm. And they know what I'm going to be talking about. Not it's a sales call. It's not. Basically, no. it's, you know, you, you, you talk about their challenges and ultimately say, would you like help with that? Mm. And this is how. But they're, that people are expecting that. And that's mm. that's the important bit. Whereas what I do find is that this works. I do get lots of people filling out. It's great because they book in and I just get emails coming with people booking. But they don't always proceed. Mm. And so like I want to focus on the people who are going to proceed. Because mm. um, I'm happy to give away free stuff. But I want to do that in group settings. You know, there's tons of stuff we can give away free on our website. More than happy to do that. But my time is so precious. Mm. Like all of us, time mm. is the most precious thing we have. So finding a way of, of focusing on the people who actually want to move forward uh, without being too mercenary about it. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've definitely had it from the other side where I've gone down sales funnels and I can see them reject me because I've not, I've not been the right type. And then, you know, they really become standoffish at that point, really becomes it more curt. They're shutting it down as quickly as possible because they need to move on to the next one. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you don't want that. You want a nice feeling at the end of it, even mm. if you can't help people. Anyway, so that's what one of the key things we want to do is get the website live first. That's the key thing, isn't it, Claire? Number one. Um, yes. Which is a, still a big task, but we're nearly there. The next thing is to then really bring in this, this a quiz, I guess, or... I haven't thought of a good name for it, but it's part of a marketing funnel, um, which is going to help our process. Um, the other thing, and it's what we're doing now, is I wanted to change the club to a more weekly format. I'll come off share now. Um, I wanted to change the club to a more weekly format and just give myself more headache. <laughs> um, no, basically, I want to bring it to weekly format because I think more people will be able to access it because it's every week. So they, they don't feel it's such a big commitment. They have to come on that monthly one. They can come on. They can just drop in, drop out, and I want it to be um, easier for people to, to engage with. I want it to be more informal. I felt that the way certainly the webinar system, Demio, worked was I was presenting and people were listening. And that's fine for some topics. So I know, um, I think we've got, um, I won't mention his name, but we've got someone booked for next month who's going to be talking about social media. Um, is it TikTok? in fact, mm -hmm. um, which is something I've been wanting to do. So, you know, where they are presenting a topic where people need to find out more information, that's great. You do want that sort of presenting out. But a lot of what we talk about, I want engagement because it's not about me telling everyone what, what they should be doing. It's about suggesting an idea and mm -hmm. then getting people to talk around that. And Zoom really was a barrier to doing that, I think. Great. It was great for people doing sales demonstrations and other things like that. But actually, engagement is terrible. This is so much better. I mean, I've been using Zoom with the Growth Hub for delivering workshops. And it's great because you can see people. It's really nice to actually see people, even if they don't talk. You can see them nodding, see them writing things down. And I've, I've really enjoyed doing that for all the, all the workshops I did last year with Growth Hub uh, and Cool Ventures. And so this, um, that's what I want to do, convert the club to Zoom as well. So hopefully... You know, we'll refine this process as we go and, and, and make it what you want. But I, I do want it to be more conversational. You know, and some of the things we've got lined up are um, to have a more topical relevance each month, to actually have some presentations 
some discussions, some like free for all. I'm, I'm, I certainly intend that we're going to have like quite an open event um, sessions where we don't know what's going to happen. It's more like let's just chat, just come on and just talk about how, how your month's been going. Because all of those I've seen throughout all of the networking I've done and the, the workshops, people like to come together and they like to talk about issues. They like to air things. They like to mm. learn. They like all of this mix. It's all about sharing yeah. as well, isn't it? Yes. I mean, there's quite a lot. You know, you are really good at what you do, um, but everybody else has a different spin or a different way of doing it, or they might have a different process or... You, know. you can get ideas from each other. Yeah, well. absolutely. Yeah. And it's well, it, the same space to share. Exactly. And that's, um, I was actually on a course with Ang Harrod and um, who's not here. I'm talking about her. She's not here, but she, she, she was, we, we what was the workshop was about? It's about um, um, uh, like R and D and development and creativity. And I said, what, what I actually get out of speaking to clients, that's where I learn new things. That's mm. where we experiment. That is our R and D. Mm. So, but it basically over the course of that i discussed with Ang harris like yeah i'm going to do this and make it weekly that that is the idea this becomes the idea generation it's giving back it's taking i learn as much as i give hopefully yeah. uh, i love it so we'll see see if it works it might not work but well it is you know the networking side of things is all about added value for the business as well because yes. some networking um dues that i go to some some meetings that i go to aren't necessarily and i know they won't be for us to get business from but it's just to see what they can do for our business in as much as grants um you know anything like that if what's out there for our business is there a solar grant is there you know a, something um you know um an innovative grant or whatever yes. and and if you if you go out there and you're talking to people and you say oh we're just starting to do this it, and somebody else could say well i've just had a conversation with that guy over there and he's helping and they're doing 60 40 grants so you want to go over and, and have a chat and, and it's that kind of thing that you can have added value for your business as well as actually getting business so yeah. that's why it's good to speak to people. it is and that's why moving to weekly allows us to do that more easily because that otherwise you've got 12 sessions they're precious mm. you've got to pick who's on it now we've got what well, it's not going to be 52 there will be breaks in it but let's say something like between 44 and 48 sessions over the year we can now bring people in and talk about software. You know, if we're using mm. a key piece of software like Surfer SEO, you know, I'm talking about mm. that a lot. I think I've mentioned that to people. I'd like to get them involved and sort of let, let them show us through the software and talk about it and just do more things like this. Anyway, mm. well, I'll, I'll just I want to touch on some things from you as well, Nikki. And um, just finally, I want to focus on SEO. Funnily enough, we just haven't been focused on it for the past uh, year, two years. I now want to start doing it for, for the other services. Um, marketing support coaching and web development so they're my goals for this year and roughly how we're going to do it at seo is just going to be using that tool surfer seo which is a great tool anyway i'm going to shut up for a bit nikki what what sort of maybe pick a couple of things that you're going to focus on this year and maybe how you're going to do it and then we'll finish oh up. okay so um our focuses for this year are quite um quite simple really um because of the last two years and we've gone quite digital and and everything's gone quite mad on that side of things we now know that we need to build our connections on LinkedIn uh, and we need to get more subscriptions on YouTube and all that kind of thing so we we're going to really look and work with the team to be able to get LinkedIn both all of the LinkedIn profiles that we've got for the businesses um, you know out there we've just had a new BDM and he's great for the contact side of things so um, that sounds like I'm using for his contacts but he's he is great and he's been in the construction industry so he's got lots of you know lots of um contacts and what have you but along uh, from that side of the, the coin we've then realized that obviously we've all got contacts we've all been really busy and I say when we I mean we as a team we've all been really busy but actually um it's not just us you know Karen and I that can do the marketing it's everybody Yes. So we are going yes. to um, spread the net a little bit further and just say to everybody, look, there is a really easy way of doing this on LinkedIn now. All you've got to do is just spend 10 minutes and just go down and invite some people that can come to the party and have a look at what we're doing. And it's just about spreading all that information out there. So that's one, one of our, goal, one of our um, goals for this year is to increase um, the Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube um, connections. And then obviously, you know, we've got the same old goals, really, which, um, you know, work. So it's redoing the videos. 
doing what make you know what we what works so really looking at the 10 by 10 okay so we've got a 10 by 10 and it's marketing um process you want to just use. briefly yeah, explain what that is yeah so um in in its entirety it's, it's an excel spreadsheet and um, we use 10 ways of getting business in so it's 10 10 marketing um funnels that we've got of getting and um, getting um, business in getting leads in um so we use things like suppliers referrals marketing referrals website um seo um advertising pr events and what have you but it gives us an idea and, and a tracker um and an auditable trail of what we do and how we get the business in and then we can see return on investment and what have you so from the 10 by 10 we just make obviously um we just keep records of everything that we do. Mm. And if one bit of the of the marketing source isn't working, then we swap it out for another. So now Peter's come on board and the new BDM. We'll be talking about the, the 10 sources that we've got now. Are, are they all working? Well, I know one of them probably isn't, so we'll probably swap out, but we don't know what we're going to swap it out to. But it's it really focuses you on not to keep, you know, when people say, don't, don't keep doing stuff that isn't working and don't mend something that isn't broken so it really focuses you on that because we know that things like the seo works because we know that the numbers are going up for the website inquiries um we know that um you know supplier referrals works we know that customer referrals work but also from their customer referrals working they get a thank you for that so you know we know that that works so we can do more of that and we can say oh look, don't forget we can thank you with an amazon voucher and da 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 so um, it's really it's really for focus. So from from that we've looked at that, and then the marketing plan is attached to that, and the social media calendar is attached to that, and and now we've got you know hashtags that we're um, we're researching, and and that's attached to that. So everything is based around that one document, and, and it doesn't seem like it's a very important document, but actually it keeps the mm. cogs going in the marketing. So we know that from from that we know that our videos work, so we're going to do more videos. We know that. Um, the whole um, holistic part of, of marketing needs to be a balance. So we know that we need to get news articles out there and, and information out there for people. But then we need to know that they also need to know that we're doing team building events and we're doing this together and somebody's just had a puppy or, you know, so we just, it, it is, um, we've, had, but we've just spoken to um, Jack and we've just had a, an overall of our social media. So this is Jack um, McCautry from, yeah, Jack McCautry from, Courtry, from Courtry, Courtry Social. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, we've, oh, I realised, oh, I'm not going into that, but I realised the other day how young he is and how we first met um, seven years ago when I first started doing this, this role. And then he turned 30 the other day. I was like, my God, that's mad. Anyway, <laughs> um, he um, he's overawed our, our social media, um, but not because we thought we were doing anything wrong, but because we knew that social media moves on and the platforms move on and they do different things. And are we still doing the right thing in those platforms? Are we making the most out of them? Um, and he's um, basically said, yes, we're doing all the right things, but we just need to do what we were doing more of and balance it out a bit and get in, get these information and um, pieces out there, news pieces, that kind of thing. Um, when I say news pieces, I just mean, is somebody talking about something that's relevant um, CCTV wise somewhere that's quite funky or quirky or, that we can bring to the market and we can say oh have you seen this and then it's another thing to talk about rather than constantly saying or you know constantly looking like we might be selling because we don't want to look like we're always selling because we're not we just want to say look, we can do this and we can help you with that and if you'd like to meet us then we can do this so it's it's more of a it's more of that process really um but yeah just keep doing what we're doing and um and I can't there isn't really anything that we're doing that's like oh apart from getting back into the exhibitions which is is nice so there's three exhibitions that we're um actually going to in the next mm -hmm. six months there's three exhibitions that we're actually exhibiting at and then there are two exhibitions that we are visiting um so we're, we're getting out there we're being brave that'd be nice oh, that's it? fab yeah um i just realized it's uh, we've reached 11 o'clock that's that's, wow. that's great that's that fun. went quick it did <laughs> um so what i'm going to do is uh we we might we could carry on chatting but i'm gonna, what i'm going to do is just say to everyone that our next club session is next week at 10 a.m till uh, 11 a.m we we promise it's going to be at least 45 minutes that's what that's all right it might be longer it might be an hour it might be a little bit more than that but we'll try and keep it to 
at least 45 minutes, you, you know you're going to get in there for a, a length of time. Um, what, uh, Claire is now managing all of this, so she will share with everyone um, on Basecamp for the moment. That will move over somewhere else at some point, but on Basecamp for the moment, what, what we'll start doing is we're sharing you share a month ahead when the dates are roughly what the, the schedule is going to be, maybe su subject to change. Um, but then basically just, just add a calendar event in every uh, Friday at 10 um, for, for each one. And you can just drop in, just, just drop in, see what happens. If not, we'll have a recording and you can look at it afterwards. But anyway, we should go to keep it an hour. Um, I'll stop the recording and see you all guys next week.